as Rwanda marks the 30th anniversary of its genocide. Arise News correspondent Olushala John Jacobs in this report examined a period uh, where the when the world came to face to face with the horrors of the mass violence and the devastating consequences of the ethnic conflict. This is his report. 30 years after Rwandan genocide, the world is yet to come to terms with one of the bloodiest massacres of the 20th century in which a nation became virulently and viciously divided while their colonial vampires looked away. The Tutsis and the moderate Hutus, like the proverbial Okonkwo, refused to yield to the warning of the boy called your father, do not bear a hand in his death, as they dealt severe blows on their own clansmen. Right in their own very eyes, their world fell apart. The center could no longer hold, and anarchy was loosed upon them. In 1994, Rwanda, known as the land of a thousand hills, was torn apart by one of the darkest chapters in human history. The world now marks the 30th anniversary of the country's genocide, a period of unimaginable horror and devastation that left scars still felt across the nation. Join me as the world remembers, reflects, and honors the lives lost and the resilience of those who survived. Myself was in the country. I was young. I think uh, by then I was uh, two years or one and a half. So we are being fought against. We flew to Uganda where we spent some years. Then we came back in 1997. Genocide for that took place here in general in Rwanda. It was so horrible. I don't have uncles. I don't have aunties. They are killed there. So I have that experience so much. And uh, my grandpas and mom were taken away from my mom. So the experience, in a nutshell, I can say is that it was so bad the extent that this tribe didn't want the fellows to stay in Rwanda. That's why they decided to say, let them abolish, finish all Tutsis that we are living in Rwanda. Just what we know is what we, we founded in the orphans where we were. Because those soldiers who brought us from dead bodies taken to orphans, before you, they receive you, they recorded. So that is where I founded as personally my story, that I have been in the dead bodies and the soldiers took me to orphans. Rwanda descended into darkness as ethnic tensions boiled over, leading to one of the deadliest genocides in human history. Now, on the 30th anniversary of this tragedy, we remember the victims, honor the survivors, and examine Rwanda's remarkable journey of healing and reconciliation. We don't even know the truth about that Rwandan genocide. We don't know the truth. A lot of events have been buried um, over that issue. Uh, I'm persuaded in my mind that there are foreign hands that were embed embedded in the genocide there. I'm absolutely convinced. You see, if you say democracy is a game of numbers, then please explain to me, uh, or explain to the world, how minority Tutsis will be ruling majority Hutus. Explain to me, unless somebody has engineered it.
So far, so good for Rwanda uh, since 1994 when they had that uh, genocide, uh, where in the spirit of uh, a few months, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands, some say 700,000, one million uh, that were killed uh, in that uh, bloodbath involving the Hutu and the Tutsi in, uh, in the country. Uh, so far, so good. If you able to come out of it, the country is developing. The country has become a shining example of peace building and uh, post-conflict reconstruction and all that. Uh, but um, there, there are still challenges in future because there are different approaches you adopt when you want to resolve, when you want to do peace building, uh, when you want to promote reconciliation. The part that Rwanda has a, a, adopted is the one we call collective amnesia. They've tried to say, let us pretend that that genocide never happened. Let's just forget about it. Um, let us let them not be. Uh, let us bring anybody. Let us create something that is explosive after that, and it has worked fairly well for them so far. For instance, I was in uh, you know Rwanda you know a few years ago, and nobody wanted to talk about the genocide. That's the approach they have adopted, which is good. But post Kagame Rwanda, how will it look like? Yeah. The key point I would say for Rwanda really is post Kagame, because you can't in a sense, compel people not to talk about something that has shaped their future and not allow opposition voices and think that you, that everything is all right. So yes, we can celebrate what Rwanda has become in terms of development, in terms of um, a government that also very, that's also very clear. So Paul Gagami has been very unequivocal in, in advocating for his country and advocating for his people. So when it comes to dealing with um, developed nations, he's, he's not cowering, cap in hand. He's coming to the table with them as equals and having that conversation. We give him credit for that. But it's a challenge when you, to do that, you have to remain in power. And you have not enabled a vibrant opposition so people can debate ideas and contest with you. So if anything happens to Paul Kagame, it would, that would be the real test of how well Rwanda has done post-genocide. The genocide, which lasted 100 days, saw the systematic slaughter of more than 800 Rwandans, mostly Tutsis, but also moderate Hutus, who opposed the killings. Through meticulous planning and propaganda, extremist Hutu militias incited violence and carried out mass killings, while the international community failed to intervene. The genocide in Rwanda was not spontaneous. It was fueled by years of ethnic tension and political manipulation. The failure of the international community to act remains a stain on the world's collective conscience. What we faced in Kigali, as well as as a, is a failure of the international community. Those international bodies were there, were all there, but there was no intervention. None. None. So the intervention was something to be enough. That means it was there. There was no intervention. Despite the horror, Rwanda has made remarkable strides towards reconciliation and healing. Today, Rwanda stands as a symbol of hope, where forgiveness and unity have triumphed over hate and division. As Rwanda marks this solemn occasion, the country pauses to reflect on the devastating events that took place over the period of 100 days and learn from the mistakes of the past while committing itself to building a future of peace, unity, and respect for all. Oh, Lushola John Jacobs, Arise News.